let's travel to Zimbabwe. Meet Jane, a 25-year-old farmer who lives with her husband and their two young children. She owns some chickens, a cow, and farms on a small plot of land where she mainly grows maize and groundnuts, so the family is fully dependent on rain-fed agriculture. Jen sells most of her crops, as well as eggs, and she keeps some for their own consumption. Farming is not that profitable anymore. That is why her husband is working in a nearby city. Yet the food she produces is not sufficient for the family and their diet is monotonous. On top of that, Jane's community is increasingly exposed to changes to the climate like droughts and unpredictable rainfall patterns. This causes harvest failures and reduced fodder and water for her cow. Jen is struggling to balance farming practices, childcare and household tasks. Almost half of the children in Jane's village are malnourished and she is worried about the health of her own children. Climate and nutrition are interlinked. How? Let's take a closer look. Malnutrition is a result of either inadequate food intake or a disease that prevents the body's uptake of nutrients. Food intake and disease status are determined by a variety of factors. Climate change can affect all of them. For adequate food intake, the household needs to grow enough diverse foods or get foods at the market, not only during the rainy season, but all year round. Changes in the climate, however, can increase the risk of household food insecurity. Unpredictable rainfall patterns or drought leads to crop damage, farmland erosion, and reduced animal fodder. Yields reduce, less food is available, and food prices might increase. Climate change affects work opportunities and social structures. Family members leaving home to work elsewhere increases the burden on family members who stay behind to work on the land and to care and feed the young, old or sick family members. Access to healthcare is important to prevent and cure disease. Extreme weather events such as flooding may damage roads, bridges and healthcare facilities, making it difficult for people to access healthcare when sick. Lastly, water and sanitation systems are stressed by droughts, floods and rising sea levels. This will affect the availability of clean water for irrigation and human consumption, such as washing, drinking and cooking. This could make people sick and cause diarrhea in children. Diarrhea reduces the body's capacity to absorb nutrients from food. For people who are weakened by malnourishment and disease, or who are busy taking care of ill community members, it is hard to take climate action, to invest in strategies to adapt to climate change, or make different choices in land use, energy use, and food consumption or livelihoods to mitigate climate change. Because, yes, the type of foods we consume and how they are produced and transported and the amount of food waste also determines how much greenhouse gases are released. So we have seen that climate change and nutrition are strongly linked. This means there is a huge potential to take combined efforts in tackling malnutrition and taking climate action. Let's go back to Jane. What can she and other stakeholders in Zimbabwe do? At the national level, the government could support interministerial collaboration between multiple actors and provide comprehensive policy frameworks. At the decentralized level, extension officers and health officers can promote healthy and sustainable diets and climate-smart farming techniques. But Jane and her community can also take action on their own. Instead of growing maize, which is prone to drought, Jane could consider other cereal grains, such as traditional grains like sorghum and millets, which are both nutritious and drought-tolerant. 
IFAD recognizes and prioritizes climate change and nutrition by investing in transforming the lives of the most vulnerable rural communities. IFAD promotes rural development, gender equality and inclusiveness to end hunger and poverty, food security and nutrition in the face of a changing climate. This was an example from Zimbabwe, but these linkages can be found in other countries where IFAD operates as well. Do you want to know more about this? Then visit the IFAD website.